We all know that an asteroid impact led to the demise of the dinosaurs, but there have been other mass extinctions throughout Earth's history that are much more mysterious in terms of what initially caused them. One such extinction event is the Devonian mass extinction. The late Devonian extinction event was the second of the big five mass extinctions that have occurred throughout the Phanerozoic Eon, or the Eon that goes from around 550 million years ago to now, and this extinction event happened around 360 million years ago, again at the end of the Devonian period. Two extinction pulses caused likely by cooling events, but we'll get to why we're not totally certain about that later, happened during this late Devonian period, and these cooling events are both marked as expected by positive oxygen and carbon isotope excursions. The first of which devastated tropical taxa like reef builders, ammonoids, brachiopods, and placoderm fish as shown in this picture. And coral strom reefs or the reef building corals and stromatoporoids that dominated reef communities during this time never fully recovered. Cold water adapted species, however, weren't heavily affected, which is consistent with cooling as being the cause for these extinctions. Moreover, the spread of cold adapted silica sponges throughout shallower environments also provide support for cooling as the cause for these extinction events. The second pulse of extinctions, however, was less severe than the first pulse, but for placoderms, it was the end. Placoderms, or these fish over here, which dominated the Devonian period, totally went extinct. And planktonic acrotarchs, although they didn't totally go extinct, they suffered major extinctions as well. And the second pulse of extinctions also had an associated cooling event, but this cooling event was really severe. The glacial deposits that we see from this time spread to regions that at the time or 30 degrees south of the equator, indicating that the glaciers spread really close relatively to the equator, which is just a lot of cooling and a lot of glaciation and would have led to major extinctions of a lot of warm adapted species that lived near the equator. However, why was this cooling pulse really severe, but the extinctions less severe than the first pulse? Well, this second pulse of extinctions likely would have been much more devastating had the initial cooling pulse, the first pulse, not already wiped out many of the warm adapted species. So the already devastated population of the warm adapted species during this time made the second event less severe than it would have been. But as I suggested at the beginning of the video, it's not so black and white that cooling was the cause, at least not the only cause. The mid to late Devonian was also a time in which oceanic bottom waters became anoxic or completely oxygen depleted and oxygen requiring benthic organisms would have died because of that. And this likely also explains why tropical reef communities were hit so hard. In addition, there were frequent sea level changes, which in and of themselves would have been devastating to many species, especially those that lived on epicontinental seas that then disappeared when sea level fell. Um, and one of the sea level rises was associated with the onset of anoxic deposition or oxygen lacking conditions. And each sea level rise was then followed by glaciation and sea level fall, the most severe of which was during that second pulse of extinction when we saw the glaciation increase quite a bit toward the equator. If you want to know more about how ocean anoxic events occur, how they're initiated, and how they're terminated, you can check out my Biogeochemical Cycles Part 2 video. I'll link it up here to the top right for you. But what is it that caused the anoxia or the oxygen depletion in the oceans during the Devonian period? Well, let's talk a little bit about land plants. I promise I'm going to make this connection later on, but land plants had a lot to do with this. During the Devonian period, vascular plants spread over land. Now, we talk in the Ordovician mass extinction video about how non-vascular plants like mosses had spread over land during the Ordovician before the Devonian. However, during the Devonian, vascular plants evolved and began to spread, and these plants 
also increased in height throughout the Devonian from around 30 centimeters at the beginning to around 30 meters near the end due to the evolution of roots that could allow them to be taller as well as deeper, which is going to be important in a second. And the evolution of seeds also helped spread these plants throughout areas that were previously uninhabited because seeds allowed plants to inhabit drier regions. Now I talk about when this occurred and why this is and all of that in my when life moved to land video if you want to check it out, I'll link it up here to the top right. But the major thing for the Devonian extinctions here is that the expansion of these plants broke up bedrock throughout continental land masses and formed deep layers of soil. This was the first time that soil really formed deeply and that promoted weathering, which transported a bunch of nutrients to the ocean and caused eutrophication and anoxia. See how we're bringing this full circle now? So anoxia is caused by enhanced weathering because an increase in the flux of nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen to the ocean causes algal blooms, which underneath those algal blooms, bacterial decomposition of the algae uses up all the oxygen and therefore animals that rely on oxygen die and everything is just not happy. Well, other than the anaerobic bacteria that don't like oxygen, other than those, everything's not happy under those blooms. And that is what eutrophication and anoxia is. And again, I talk about this in the Ordovician. I just realized I spelled Ordovician wrong there. Um, but I talk about that in the Ordovician mass extinction video, as well as my mineral or microbial weathering video, which I'll link up here to the right if you want to check out. So we know the spread of plants contributed to anoxia in the bottom waters of the ocean, but the first large photosynthesizing forest that grew during the Devonian also likely reduced CO2 in the atmosphere and weathering also draws down atmospheric CO2. And the ultimate result of both of these processes drawing down CO2 is cooling. And glacial deposits, as I mentioned earlier, suggest widespread glaciation at the end of this Devonian period. And glaciation and subsequent sea level fall after having the mild climate of most of the Devonian period also caused major extinctions of those organisms and animals that had been adapted to the more mild or warmer climate of the Devonian. And eventually the continued drawdown of carbon or CO2 from the atmosphere pulled Earth out of a greenhouse climate and into an ice house climate that continued through the Carboniferous and Permian. And I talk about this in upcoming or previous videos. I'm not sure the order I'll put these out, but I have a video about the Carboniferous Ice Age and Permian mass extinction and climate change during that time. But the cooling, glaciation, sea level fall, and anoxic bottom waters may not have been the only thing to cause mass extinctions during the end of the Devonian period. There is also a little bit of evidence for an extraterrestrial cause, or at least contribution. For example, some attribute these extinctions to UV damage because UV damage to fossil pollen and spores during this time suggests long-term destruction of the ozone. And it's been hypothesized that a nearby supernova, which is the explosion of a star in a nearby solar system, may have damaged Earth's ozone, leading to massive UV damage to life, triggering mass extinctions. Because if you don't know, ozone is a layer in our atmosphere that blocks a lot of UV light, which would be really damaging to genetic material of all organisms. So it would have caused surface living and shallow living organisms to be majorly affected in a not great way. However, the destruction of the ozone would have required sustained global warming rather than cooling. So it's kind of contradicting other evidence for the climate during this time. But I'll link the paper that suggests this as a cause down below so you guys can check it out because they do have some interesting ways around this. Another proposed cause or contributing cause to these extinction events is volcanism. Argon dating has confirmed correlation in timing between the eruption of the Vilui, Vilu traps in Siberia or on the Siberian Craton during the first pulse of late Devonian extinctions 
And it could be that if these eruptions were strong enough that SO2 or sulfur dioxide ejected into the atmosphere, high enough into the atmosphere from this volcanism could have formed high albedo sulfuric acid aerosols that reflect and block a lot of sunlight. That's what albedo means is basically surface reflectivity. So they would have blocked a lot of sunlight and caused or contributed to the global cooling during the time. So as a summary of what we think we know about the Devonian extinction and what caused it, we had roots and seed plants evolved and therefore large forests form and spread throughout regions that had been previously uninhabited. And this formed soils which enhanced weathering rates and that produced eutrophication and anoxia in the oceans due to nutrient flux and primary productivity increase. And the anoxia led to mass extinctions at the time and cooling and glaciation due to the enhanced weathering rates and carbon sequestration, which also led to more mass extinctions at the time, and other potential contributing factors to the climate change and the extinctions at the time include UV damage and volcanism. And although weaker than the Ordovician, mass extinctions are the first of the big five mass extinctions that have happened in this eon, the Devonian extinctions were more devastating and had a more profound and prolonged effect because they heavily affected both the top and the base of the food chain, like reef communities and acrotarchs to placoderm fishes or the top predators at the time. If you want to check out the Ordovician mass extinction event video to learn about how non-vascular plants or mosses and things would have affected climate even without root systems to form soil, you can check that video out. I'll put it up here on the screen. And also, if you want to check out my major reference or the Earth System History book, it's linked in my description as well as other papers that I used for this video. You can find them down there. And if you want to see extra content and support the channel further, you can press join down below to join as a channel member and you'll get bonus content and you'll get to support the channel and I will really really appreciate it and if you've done so thank you so much it really does help out and if you can't do so I totally understand I would still very much appreciate it if you would press the like button because that's completely free and I would really really appreciate that anyway guys thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video bye